nothing but the truth. What would he say about you? Now we learned last month in our study of the Sermon on the Mount that Christ commands us that we are to love our enemies as we love ourselves. Would our enemies be able to testify against us that we truly show them love? Would they be able to say that in spite of their hateful attitude and ill treatments of you, that you keep forgiving them and doing them good and treating them right? Would they say that no matter how bad they slander you, curse you, and try to destroy you, that you just keep showing the love of Jesus towards them? Or would they say that you are a bitter, angry, self-avenging person that has no evidence of being like Jesus? You know, when I pulled that part out for my uh, uh, for the sermon, that's the hardest one for me. I looked at that and I said, my gosh, you know, I try, I try hard, but loving the enemy like you love yourself, I, I don't know, I, I keep telling myself that I want to be a Christian, that I am a Christian, that I've been forgiven by the blood of Christ, but I'm also human. And that one, for me personally, I know I have to work on. Every Christian ought to be leaving behind four kinds of evidence as you move through life on a daily basis. Physical evidence. If someone followed you around for a week, where would they find themselves? In church on Sunday? Well, how about Sunday night? or at other regularly scheduled times? Would they follow you anywhere which would make them wonder whether Christ was truly the highest priority in their life? There's behavioral evidence. Your behavior is controlled by one of three factors. The crowd around you, the circumstances surrounding you, or the character within you. Because Christians should be controlled by the mind of Christ, a Christian's behavior ought to be the reflection of Jesus. The way that you see your life shapes your life, and when you understand that life is a test, you realize that nothing is insignificant in your life. Testimonial evidence. If your conversations were recorded for a few days, what would your words reveal about you and your testimony? Would they be characterized as words of grace or an encouragement? Or would they be of gossip, gossip or judgmental attitudes towards people? Then we have fingerprint evidence. Just how criminals leave a legacy of fingerprints behind, which indicates their presence at a crime, so does a Christian leave a legacy uh, that becomes a type of fingerprint evidence in his or her life's impact. Everyone take a look at your fingerprint. Nobody else in the world has a print like yours. God created you to be unique and special in your own way. And in this world, every person leaves behind his or her own unique mark. There's another sense in which we leave our mark. Every one of us leaves a fingerprint on the lives of other people. Now, parents and grandparents, especially on the lives of your children and your children's children. We don't stay on the world forever, but after we're gone, our impact remains, good or bad. As Christians, 
Let us pray that we will always hear the words, guilty is charged, as we stand before the court, shining with the grace of God. I've got a uh, video, uh, a music video from uh, a group called the Newsboys. They're a contemporary uh, Christian uh, group. And I think this, I'm hoping that this uh, video uh, gives a little bit better fit of what I was trying to say in, in my words. And I'd just like uh, to ask you to listen to the words of this uh, video. <laughs> There was a line in that uh, in that song said, "I'll pay the price to be your light." Oh, I want to be guilty. It's your choice today. You can live out your life with the attitude that you are innocent of a Christian, of being a Christian, and spend eternity in a place called hell. Or you can be found guilty and sentenced to a life of eternity in heaven with our Lord, who's promised us riches 
beyond our imagination. Would you consider yourself to be a Christian? How do other people see you? Are the facts of your life enough to convict you as a born-again believer in Christ? Does your daily behavior prove otherwise? Now, God is the only judge. May we all diligently seek to acquire and exhibit the attributes of godliness and live in his righteousness alone. With a little practice, you may end up rejoicing with all the other guilty as charged Christians sentenced to heaven for all eternity. Now, John 13, 35, he writes, Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I humbly ask that you become our counselor. When we stand before the courts of life, that we will always be found guilty living our lives in such a way that we glorify your presence and that you, our reward is eternity in heaven with you. Thank you for being our perfect example. Amen. Let's, um, let's go into a moment of quiet meditation as we uh, prepare for the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess to you now that we have sinned. We are not high God regards the lowly and love and compassion. Even the perfect Christ welcomes the sinful and lost with open arms. Come, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ and all are forgiven by grace. Amen. Well, does anyone have any joys or concerns we can uh, pray for today. It's a joy to have you here. It's a joy to have Fritz here asking surgery on Wednesday. All right. And it's good to There was only one part of his body he worked on. <laughs> it was his mouth, right? That's not a miracle. <laughs> She lives in Monticello. She's a widow lady who has survived at least three bouts of cancer. She's dealing with it again. Mm -hmm. And she finds out on the 14th what um, <coughs> steps will be taken to relieve her of this. And uh, she's, she's had a really tough time. And we so hoped that this last time would be the last. I have, um, I have one um, eyes and her grandson um, went back to uh, the doctor uh, this week and it's not major but he's uh, 
always had fluid on the ears, and now he's six, and he's had.